Hey guys, today we are bringing you a different type of video. Today we are going to talk to you about soil testing, how you can do it at home, and at the end of this video we're going to show you a live demo on how you can do it yourself. First of all, before we get started, we want to give a huge shout out to Rob at Little House Off Grid. He did a shout out to us and kind of profiled our channel a few days ago. And we just want to thank him for that. We really appreciate it. It's hard when you're just starting out as a YouTuber. So we are really looking forward to being able to do the same thing for other YouTube creators that are just getting started and just as a way to pay it forward. So thank you, Rob, so much. We've linked his channel in our show notes and also up above. So definitely check that out if you're not following him yet. And if you are considering buying off-grid property or if you're considering starting a homestead, definitely subscribe to our channel. We're just starting the journey and we have a ton of great information that we're gonna share with you in our journey. So Doug, what exactly is a soil test and why is it important? That's a good question, Carrie. A soil test or a soil analysis test is the testing of the chemical properties, the biological properties, physical properties, and nutrients of your soil. So we took soil samples when we were down in Arizona of our property in two different spots. Why we did this is because it's very important to know for compaction, for building materials, to know how much of the organic matter is in the actual soil. So when it comes to growing food in the desert you really need to know how much organic matter is in there you may need to amend your soil if there's not enough organics in it and for building reasons you want to know the ratio of clay to sand for perhaps like rammed earth construction or even sandbag construction there are many reasons why you're going to need a soil test on your property and here are a few of the reasons why. One of the number one reasons you're going to want to know what's in your soil is for growing crops. That's really important. So you're going to want to know if your soil has the correct nutrients or if you're going to need to amend the soil like Doug mentioned a little bit earlier. It's also a great way to see what the mycelium content is of the soil and see if that's something that your soil contains. Another great reason to know what your soil is comprised of is for things like erosion control water absorption, water retention, as well as how your soil compacts and if there's any contaminants in your soil. If your property was, you know, a prior dumping ground for something, that's something that you're going to want to know and, uh, you know, you might need to do some mitigation on your soil to make it safe. Yeah, so like Carrie was saying, uh, sometimes water will go through different types of soil d at different speeds, like for instance, sometimes sand the water moves through it almost instantaneously. The clay, it could take 100 years for water to move to pass through one foot of clay. Knowing what your soil type is, constitutes as, is very important in building, especially sandbags and rammed earth where you need a ratio of 1.5 sand to two parts clay. So knowing from these tests, the ratios will enable you to decide whether you can do those types of constructions and knowing how your water flows through your soil will enable you to figure out if swales or berms are gonna work on your property or if they're just gonna wash away or if they're gonna hold their form and work for you in water mitigation. Sometimes soil testing is actually a requirement by the state or the county. When you're going to go ahead and put in a septic or a well, you will be required in most cases to have a soil test. And oftentimes to even get a building permit, they'll require you to get a soil test. And then you're asking when should these soil tests be taken? They can be done all year round, but preferably in the fall. So I'm gonna ask you a question, Carrie. How do I get information about my soil? That's a great question, Douglas. 
So one of the first ways that we would recommend that you get information about your soil is by performing a free at-home soil test. We're actually going to demonstrate that for you just a little bit later in the video. Next, you'll want to check with your local county where the property is located. They often will offer free or low-cost testing kits. The third way you can get information about your soil is by ordering a professional chemical soil analysis. This is a very robust process where they take samples of your soil and they test the chemical, chemically test your soil and give you all sorts of really valuable information. Now the soil analysis is not cheap. It's going to set you back anywhere from around $800 up to about $2,200 depending on where you're at in the country. A fourth way to get information about your soil is by checking with your local gardening center. They will often have inexpensive soil testing kits that you can purchase for usually around $30. A fifth way that you can obtain information about your soil is actually through the U.S. Department of Agriculture or the USDA. They do have a National Cooperative Soil Survey site. There's a map that you can plug addresses into, states into, counties, cities, whatever you want to do, and you can look up information about your soil and actually print a report. So we're going to go ahead and link that in the show notes below so that you can quickly find Find that map. It didn't take us long to find it, but we think you can use our link and get there fast. So when we were in Arizona, we took two soil tests. We took one under a bush and we took one under a wash. And this was so I could understand if there was any organics in the soil underneath the, the, the shrubbery. And in the wash, I wanted to see what was being washed down from the mountains, right? We're going to perform this test now. First thing you're going to need is a jar of sampled soil. The second thing you're going to need is dish soap. And once you have these two things and you have a little agua, you can perform your soil test. Well, this is the soil that we got. Um, this is actually the soil that came from the wash and it's actually lovely dark kind of orangish brownish soil, but we have no idea what's in it. So we want to find out just some basic stuff today. And what we're going to find out is what organic materials and then we're also looking for what part of the soil is clay and what part of the soil is sand. So the way we're going to do that is just by taking the soil and it's a good idea to use a glass jar so there's no weird reactions. And then you're going to want to put some water in the jar. Not You don't need to use a ton but maybe half or so or maybe around the same amount as, as soil that's in there. So just about a cup of water. And then you're going to want to squeeze a tiny bit of soap in. This is concentrated soap, so I'm not going to use a ton of it, but normally you just use just a little bit like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to stir that up really well and combine it all together. And then we're going to let this jar sit um, over the next 24 hours. And then we'll be able to look at the different layers that come through here and we'll give you an idea of exactly what our soil is comprised of. 